We're going to be taking a look at this next problem. Um, previously, that's in the notes linked below the like button, we went over a problem that had to do with steady state and voltage waveform when we're given a circuit. Uh, here we're not given a circuit, we're just given a periodic waveform, and it's being applied to a 2.5 kilo ohm resistor. So we're just going to imagine this right here. Uh, we're not mentioned steady state in here, so we are not going to use that. In the previous video, we did have something for steady state, so if you have a problem related to steady state, it's probably better to look at the video before this one. That's again, linked in the playlist below the like button. Um, but here, this is what we have. We can start this off by writing out a Fourier series for it. It even says so right here. We need to use the first three non-zero terms in the Fourier series representation of IT to estimate the average power dissipated. So we're gonna find an estimate here. We're gonna calculate the exact average power and then we are going to find the percent error between the two. So P 2.5 kilo ohms, our estimate, is gonna be, well, we know we have our current, right? We have I max, and we have a resistor. Now power is equal to voltage times current. Voltage, we can write this as current times resistance. So we're basically gonna have our I squared times our R. And so this isn't just I, this is I um, RMS. So we need to find this. To find this, we are going to start off writing the Fourier series, and this is going to be kind of like the part one. So first, we need to find our AV. Now, we need to note that our period is between 0 and t. So let's write this out. The equations can be found in the, in the notes linked below the like button. So our AV is equal to 1 over t, and then we're integrating over the entire part of our period. Now, we can see that our equation is gonna change halfway through, it even says so in the given part of our instructions. So we need to split this up, we're going from zero to t over two, and this is gonna be our I max, and then we can flip the bottom part to be times two divided by t times little t dt. And then to this, we're going to have a plus t over two, we're gonna have a t I max times our dt. And so this is gonna be our equation. Now, there's a few things that we can do. First, I'm going to factor out the I max. So we're gonna have a I max over T. And then I'm just gonna integrate. So in integrating, what we're going to do, um, we have this T right here, right? It's gonna become a T squared over two. We still have a T inside. So we're gonna have one over T. When we integrate it again, like I just said, we have T squared over two. So I'm gonna bring out the two with the constant part. And so inside of here, we're just gonna have t squared. And we're going from zero to t over two. And then we're gonna have plus, we factored out the i max. So for this next part, we're just going to have a t. And this is going from t over two to t. And so this is our equation. Now we need to put our values in. So we'll rewrite this. We're going to have that our i max and then we are going to have divided by t. And then inside of here, we are going to have our one over t times two times, we have our t squared over four, and then we will have to plug in our zero, so we do minus, this is just gonna be zero, so we'll just write out minus zero. Now we have to do the next part, plus a t, and then plus, or I'm sorry, not plus, and then we have to do a minus t over two. So this is what we have, um, we can see that these t's are going to cancel like this. And then these t's, if we factor it in, we will be able to factor out all these t's in here. And so what that means is we essentially just have a one over four. Let's just write this out. We have one over four, and then we have a minus one half. Oh, but don't forget this right here. Um, we've factored out that t, but it's gonna be four over four and then this last part, we can make it a two over four. So we have a plus four over four. It's, it's a one, but we'll just say four over four, and then we'll do minus, and then we'll just make this a two over four. That way we can see it a little bit better. And then so if we do this, we can see that we're gonna have an I max times a three divided by four, and this is our AV. So we solve for our AV, and now we need to solve for our BN. We can write this as BK as well. The two kind of variable placeholders are interchangeable, but we just gotta stay consistent. So we have BN is equal to 
2 divided by t. And then this is going to be multiplied by the integral. We're going from 0 to t over 2. And then we have our function im times 2 times little t over t. And this is being multiplied by the cosine n 2 pi. And then we have our little t times t. And this is being multiplied by our dt plus we're going from t over 2 to t. We have our im, we have cosine, and then we have our n 2 pi times little t divided by big T and then dt. And so again, if we look at the notes, I think section 16.1 below the like button, what we're going to have here for the first part is, well, first we need to make our a. And so all of this is going to be a and this being multiplied by t. And so when we plug this in, it's, I'm not looking at the notes right now, but it's going to be something like the following. We need to have our 2 over t out front. And then, you know, in fact, we can also factor out our im as well. And so we, and just inside of here, we're going to have a 2 over t. And then in here, we are going to, I think it's like 1 over a squared times cosine a t. So we can have our a squared flipped. We're just going to have t squared divided by our n. So we're going to have 4 because the bottom part is squared also. And then we're going to have pi n squared. And then we're going to have cosine. And then it's going to be our 2 pi times n times little t over t. And then we are going to add to this t. And then we are going to have 2 pi n. And this is being multiplied by little t. And then we have sine of our 2 pi times little t over t. And so this is for the first part. This is when we're integrating from 0 to t over 2. And what we can do from here is actually just factor in this 2 over t that I wrote out front. So over here, it's going to just stay out front. And then we're going to have a 2 over t inside of here. We can see that a few things cancel out. So this t is going to make a 1 here. This is going to make a half. And this and this 2 is going to simplify. And these t's are also going to simplify. And now we can write out the next part. So we're going to have plus. Remember, we factored out the i of m, so we don't have to deal with that. And then we're just going to have a sine and then we're going to have n 2 pi times t divided by t. And then, of course, we have our t and then n 2 pi. And then we are going from t over 2 to t. And so this is going to be our equation. Now, let's actually start plugging in our values. So we are going to have this up front. Now, if we plug in t over 2, we're going to get cosine 2 pi over t times n times t over 2. So the 2 over t and the t over 2 cancel out. And then inside of here, we're just going to have our t pi n squared. Oh, don't forget the 2 out front. And then we are going to have the cosine of our, remember, our 2t and then t over 2 cancel out. So it's just pi n. And then if we plug this into the sine, it's just going to be a um, n pi. We should have an n right here. Sorry about that. Um, but that's just going to be basically zero. So that's going to zero out because sine of pi n anything is just zero. And so that means that we're just going to have zero here. And now we can plug in the zero. So cosine of zero is just one. So we're going to have a minus because we always have to subtract the lower bound from the upper bound. And then the cosine is one. So inside of here, we're going to have t over two pi n squared. Now, if we do the second part for our sine, we can see that it's just going to be 0 minus 0. So we're not going to look at that. But this is going to be our equation. Um, we can simplify a little bit. So the t's can be turned out like this. The 2's can be factored like this. And then our equation is just going to look like the following. We're going to factor out the constants. And that's going to give us an i max over pi n squared. And then inside of here, we have cosine pi n minus 1. And so this is going to be our equation for our a of n. Now we need to find the equation for our b of n. And I wrote b of n up here. Um, that is incorrect. Sorry about that. That should be an a of n. We usually find a v, a n, and then b of n last. So now we're going to find our b of n. 
Our B of n is going to be very, very similar to our A of n. In fact, it's going to be almost the exact same thing. The only difference is that for our B of n, we're going to have, well, the 2 over t is going to stay the same. But inside of here, we're also integrating from the same. And then we have the same constant out front. But again, the only thing that's changing is that instead of a cosine, we're going to have a sine here. So we're going to have sine and 2 pi times little t over big T. And then this is going dt plus, and then we're integrating from t over 2 to t. And then we have our i max times the sine of our 2 pi n times little t over t, and then dt. And so it's very similar for our a of n. Again, the only difference is that we are dealing with sine now. And so for this, we can write this out, um, the integral integration of this first part, because we have this little t times all of this can be found in the next link below like button, so you don't have to like actually integrate it by parts, which can be really, really time consuming. So what I'm going to do is factor out the i of m. So we're going to have 2 i of m over t again. And then inside of here, we are going to have, well, we have our constant 2 over t. This is being multiplied, and I'm just going to factor this in, not going to put it outside parentheses this time, our a squared. So we're going to have 2 squared over the 4 pi n, and this is squared. And then we have sine, and then we have n 2 pi times little t over big T. And then we're going to have a minus. And then from here, we have to, again, factor the 2 over t in. So we have this times our big T times little t divided by the 2 pi n. And then we're going to have cosine of n 2 pi little t over big T. And this is going from 0 to t over 2. And so that's the equation for the first part. And now we have to add to it the next part. And for this next part, we're going to be adding in the cosine our 2 pi n little t over big T. And then we have t over our 2 pi n. And then this is going from t over 2 to a t. And so from here, some cool stuff is going to happen. Um, first of which is that since all of these have t's, the t's will cancel out like this because we have a t on the bottom here. And then the same thing for this 2 out front, right, because it's just a 2. So this 2 and this 2. And this is just going to become a 2. But then this 2 and this 2 will cancel out as well. Now we can start plugging some values in. You're going to have i max. And then inside of here, uh, we're going to have a t over pi n squared. Now let's plug in values for our t over 2. So our t over 2 being plugged in here is we're going to make our sine be basically just n pi, which for anything is going to be 0. So this is going to be 0. Now if we plug into our cosine, so let's throw a negative out here for the cosine, we are going to get that we have a cosine times n pi. And then we're going to have um, all of this. So we are going to have to change this a little bit because remember the sine is 0. So we're going to have a negative out front. We're going to have 2. And then if we plug in our t over 2, actually the 2 over t is going to cancel out. So we're just going to have a negative 1 over pi n. And then this is being multiplied by our cosine. And then inside of here we have our n pi. Now, we're doing a lot of math behind the scenes. Um, I just did a whole lot of math in my head. So if you need to do that on paper or something, it will get to this answer. Now, we need to plug in 0 for this, so we're going to have a minus. Plugging in 0 for sine is just going to yield us a 0, so we have a 0. Plugging in 0 for cosine is going to give us a 1. So we are going to have a minus. Oh, but if we plug in a 0 for this part, it's going to 0 out. So we're really just going to have a minus 0. So for this first part, this is all we're going to have. Now, if we look at the second part, we're going to plug in the t over 2, right? So this is going to give us the same thing. We're going to have a plus. Um, we're going to have a cosine n pi. 
And then um, looking at this, we're just going to have a 1 over pi n. Now we can plug in the t, and that's going to give us a minus. We're going to have a cosine. We're going to have 2 pi n because the t's are going to cancel out. And this is just being multiplied by 1 over our pi times n, right? And that's it for this equation. All of this first part is just going to come into this part. And then we have um, this next part, the next two, for the second part on the right. Now that we have all of this, what we can say is that this right here is going to cancel out with this right here. Because it's the same thing, just negative and positive, right? So we're left with this over here. Now, since we have a 2 pi, that means whatever we plug in here, no matter if it's odd or if it's even, we are going to have an even number. And so that means that this is always going to be a 1. And so what we can say is that we're going to have a negative i max times 1 times 1 over pi n, and we can write this as negative i max over pi n. And so all of this math for our b of n is going to lead us here. This is all of our b of n math. Um, I did a lot behind the scenes, so if you have any questions, you can leave that in the comments below the like button. Um, but this, again, is what we're going to get. So now this is the first part of our problem done. We've found our AV, we found our AN, and we found our B of N. And so now knowing this, what we can do is make a Fourier series for this. So this is going to be kind of like part two. And we will zoom in over here. The Fourier series is going to look something like this. And so let's write this out. We're going to have f of t is equal to our av. We know our av to be i max times 3 over 4 plus the summation, and it's equal to 1. We have our a of n times the cosine of all this stuff. Uh, just for simplicity, I'm not going to include the cosine here because it's not relevant to this part. But um, actually, it's included already for us. Sorry. We're going to have our i max pi n squared, and then we're going to have the cosine of our pi n minus 1, just like that. And what we else we can notice is that for this cosine pi of n, um, we only want to look at the odd values. Because if we plug in an even number, we're going to get a 1 here. And that's going to zero everything out. And so we can't really use that in our approximation. Would not be great. So what we're going to do instead is uh, we'll just use the odd. So let's plug in an odd number. If we plug in an odd number, we're going to have cosine of pi. Cosine of pi is negative 1. So we're going to have a negative 2 i max over pi n. And this is all squared on the bottom. So inside of here, we can make this a little bit simpler. It would work if we just left it how it was, but we're just going to have a minus 2 here. And we're going to have the same thing, but for our b of n. So something like this is equal to, and then our b of n is a negative i max over pi n. So this is kind of our Fourier series, right? Now, we're going to use the Fourier series to find our IRMS. We're going to set our IRMS equal to, and this is the equation for it. We are going to have our AV squared plus the summation of our n is equal to 1, and then our AN slash B of n. We're going to include both of these, and we'll go more of that in a second. Square root of 2, and this is squared. So this is the formula that we can look at to solve for this. This is also in the notes linked below the like button as well. So now let's plug some values in. We know what our AV is, right? Also, cool trick. What we're going to do is since we can see that all of these have an I max like this, like this, like this, we're going to factor out the I max. So out front, we are just going to have our I max. 
and then we could have the square root. Um, we're going to have our AV squared, or AV, if we factor it out, it's just going to be 3 over 4. So 3 over 4 squared is going to be 9 over 16. This is our AV. And now we need to find our A1. So for A1, um, we just plug in our A1. If we look right here, oh, and also remember, we need to square and square root it afterwards. If we plug in 1 for this, we are just going to have a negative 2 over pi squared. So we're going to have a negative 2 over pi squared. And we can just, we'll write this out, we'll write this out below it. Negative 2 over pi squared, right? Now, we have to square it. Remember, we have to plug it into here. So we're going to square this, and if we square the bottom part, it's just going to be over 2. So this is going to be essentially 4 over pi over 4, 2. This is going to cancel out with this. So for a1, we're going to have 2 over our pi 4. Right, so that is the equation for that. Now we want when our b1, okay? So for our b1, we're just going to plug in one here. Well, we're just gonna have a, and I'm just gonna do this over here. We are going to have a negative one over pi. So if we square this and put this over two, we are going to have one over two pi squared. So we're gonna have plus one over two pi squared. And then we're going to do the same thing for our a of 2. And, well, actually, this should be for our a of 3 because a of 2 is just going to give us 0. But just to keep these simple, I'm going to plug in a 0. But it's better practice to actually plug in something other than 0. So we have that here. Um, the 0 is fine for now. That's for our a of 2. And then we're going to have our b of 2, which is just going to be 1 over 8 pi squared. And this is going to be our equation, right? We have the square root of 1 over, or sorry, 9 over 16 plus 2 pi, plus 2 divided by pi over 4 plus 2 pi raised to the power of 4 plus 1 over 2 pi squared plus 0 plus 1 over 8 pi squared. So knowing this, we can plug all of this into a calculator. And um, I'm going to actually just draw a line between here so we don't get confused. Plugging this into a calculator is going to give us approximately 4.02. So this is our IRMS. Now, you're asking me, Brandon, what do we do with our IRMS? Well, remember, we want to find power here, right? We have the power. And to find power, um, we wrote out the formula, remember, up here. We have IRMS squared times our resistance. Well, we know our IRMS squared, we just found it to be 4.02. So we are going to have 4.02 squared times our resistance, and our resistance, well, it's 2.5. Uh, we don't need to include the kilo because our answer is going to be in kilo. And so this is going to be our equation. If we plug this into a calculator, we're simply going to get 40.41 kilowatts. So that's the answer to this first part. So all of this that we've done so far was just for part one. Now we're going to look at part two, so part B. In part B, we need to calculate the exact value of the average power dissipated, and we need to use the RMS integral. So we need to find the area, basically. We need to find the area underneath all of this. So to find the area, we're going to set A equal to, and we're going to go the um, integration of 0 over t over 2 because it's a triangle, right? When we have a triangle, we are going to get the um, equation, and that's given to us as our i of t, so we're going to have that squared. This squared is going to give us a 4i m squared divided by our t squared and then multiplied by t, little t squared, and then we have dt right here. And then we are going to have a plus, and then for the rectangular part, right here. We have to find the area under that, but that is basically, well, it's a square, so we're just going to have the um, i t, which is our i max, squared times the t over 2. And so now let's integrate. Um, this is going to give us a 4 i max squared over t squared. If we integrate the second part, we're going to have t cubed over, and then we'll just bring this down, to be a 3. And then this is going from t over 2 to 0. So what we can do here 
is just plug in our t over 2 because we know 0 is going to zero everything out. So if we plug in our t over 2, we're basically going to have t over 2 cubed. So we're going to have t cubed and then 8 cubed, or 2 cubed, sorry, is just 8. So we're going to have 8 times 3 down here plus this next part. So we're just going to have our i max squared times t over 2. That's just how it is. And then these t's will simplify. And then this 4 will simplify with this 2. And so this is what we're going to get. And so that means that these are the same, right? We have i max squared in both of them. We have a t in both of them. And then the only thing that's different is the denominator. So we can multiply this by 3 over 3. And then if we add them together, we are going to get, we have an i max squared. We have a 4 times t divided by r6. And so this is the equation for our area. To find the area, to find our i rms, because we found the area, right? This is area. We need to say that our i rms is equal to the square root of a, so the area divided by our period. We have the square root of the area over our period. It's another way to find IRMS. So this is going to be equal to the square root of our I max squared times 4 divided by 6. And then we have the T inside of here. So we have T, and then this is, remember, it's over T. So we're going to have a T like this. That means our T's are going to cancel out, and we're just going to have a 2 over 3 now. And so we're going to have our um, I max squared and then we have times 2 over 3. And then remember, our i max is 5. And so if we plug 5 into here, what we're going to get is approximately 4.08. And this is in amps. So the answer for this uh, next part is just 4.08. But it's not the answer. Remember, this is just our IRMS. We have to plug it into the power formula. So we're going to have 4.08 squared times 2.5. And so this is going to give us 41.67. So the answer for B is 41.67. Now to calculate the percent error, we have the actual um, algorithm for it. We're just going to take the true value, which is 41.67 minus the 40.41 estimate, divide it by 41.61 and multiply it by 100. So our percent error is going to be an overestimate of plus 3.05 approximately. And that's how you would go about solving this problem. On the top left is how we found the second part. And then everything else is how we found the part A.